saying here is the third degree. He said eight degrees. Yeah, well, no, but he was talking about that. Yeah. No, I said centigrade. to make. Uh, first, uh, please sign the attendance sheet. I don't know where it is. Please, uh, sign, uh, please sign that. And uh, I believe the TA already sent you the activation email to activate your uh, source account. If you haven't got it, please uh, email the TA. And uh, we will deploy the first name on Friday. And there, there's a General instruction and the requirements for lab assignments have already been posted, so uh, you can take a look. So um, Monday we talked about uh, the data link layer. So today we will give a quick overview of the network layer. We are going to talk about uh, IP addresses and uh, subnet, and also. We are going to link the data link layer and the uh, network layer by introducing this uh, <coughs> address resolution protocol, uh, ARP or uh, ARP. And we are going to talk about uh, how a router works, give several examples uh, to say how your package actually uh, moves from your local network to another network, network um, through switches and uh, routers. So if you remember the analogy we were using, so the network layer is kind of like the postal center in a, a post office service. So the postal center will sort your letters by the zip code and route them closer to the des destination. So obviously the most uh, important functionality of the network layer is uh, routing. But um, I'm not going to talk uh, too much about how routing works because um, I only want to talk the minimum network <coughs> network knowledge you need to know so we can so we can discuss security issues as soon as possible. So if you are interested in the routing issues uh, the, be the, the best place you get those knowledge is computer network class. So we discussed uh, last week, the IP protocol right now is the only protocol we are using at uh, network layer. So no matter uh, what kind of uh, physical network adapter you are using, you may use Ethernet, you may use Wi-Fi, at the network layer, we always use uh, IPv4 or IPv6. So this is uh, narrow waste in our uh, internet protocol suite right now. And above that, we have uh, uh, TCP, UDP, and uh, application layer. We have uh, all kinds of protocols. So this IP protocol is the core, obviously, is the core of the TCP IP suite. And right now, there are two versions of IP protocols. Uh, one is IPv4. This is the one uh, that is widely used. And there is another version, IPv6. So IPv6 has been standardized in 1996, but it, it has not been widely deployed. Well, we will discuss the reason in a moment. And this is uh, what uh, IPv4 header looks like. We have uh, four bits of uh, version numbers, 16 bits of total lens, uh, which means the IP packet can be up to 64 kilobytes. And we have uh, a protocol field here, eight bits, 
and uh, if you are using TCP, this protocol field will be uh, six. And uh, we have uh, other fields we are going to talk about uh, later when we talk about how to do all kinds of attacks at this network layer. And the most important part is the source address and destination address. They are both 32 bit, so they are not the MAC address we talked last week. So this is the source IP address and destination IP address. Since the source and destination IP address are only 32 bits, the total unique IP addresses available is only um, less than four billion. But remember, in the last, in the first class, we we said that it is predicted in 2020 there will be more than 40 billion IoT devices. So if each IoT devices, each IoT device has a its own unique IP address, obviously we don't have enough for that. So that's why. Um, people proposed this IPv6. So 20 years ago, people have already realized this problem. We are going to run out of uh, IPv4 address. So they proposed uh, IPv6. Uh, even though there are many improvements and enhancements over IPv4, uh, the, main, the main driving force to propose IPv6 uh, was to increase the address space. So in IPv6, uh, the IP address is uh, 128 bits. Uh, that is huge compared to 32 bits. That's, uh, that should be enough for a very, very long time. However, uh, IPv6 has not been widely used. The first reason is uh, it is not backward up compatible with all existing devices. So if you want to use IPv6, you need to update your host, update all the uh, network devices, uh, which is not very feasible, very expensive. And also, you need to change all the software. Maybe that is the easy part, but changing hardware, uh, it's very, very difficult. And another reason is uh, we have uh, a technology called the network address translation. And using this net, we can solve the, uh, the lack of uh, IPv4 address problem easily. So right now, uh, most of the systems we are using net in some way. So uh, the IP address, the lack of IP address is not that serious. So we are still using IPv4. So um, I think most of you should already know what uh, an IP address is, um, but we still uh, want to cover this. So an IP address is uh, a unique global address for a network interface. So your computer, your laptop, may have several network interfaces, and each of them should have an IP address if it wants to communicate with the internet. And obviously, each of them also have a MAC address or some kind of, some kind of a, a data link layer address. So this IP address is not physical, uh, it's logical. So the MAC address is tied with the hardware, but IP address is not. And when we say the IP address is uh, unique and global, that is not very accurate. Only the public IP addresses are global and unique. And there are some private IP address ranges we will talk about in a moment. And those IP addresses, they are not really global. So uh, different uh, local area network, they are using the same IP addresses, but those uh, IP addresses never leave those local area network. So there is no uh, confliction. So like we said, the IP address is 32 bit now. So in this class, we are already going to talk about IPv4, not IPv6. And uh, an IP address has two parts, at least two parts. Uh, one is a network prefix, one is a, a host number. 
the network prefix identifies uh, which network uh, this IP address belongs to. And the host number is assigned in those network. We usually use this dotted uh, decimal notation to uh, represent the IP address. So um, it's for the IP address, one IP address is four bytes. So the four, the f so we write it this way, like a, a binary. So the first byte, we write like a decimal ranging from zero to 255. Uh, we do the same thing for the other three bytes. <coughs> and uh, we got the final <coughs> IP address. So like uh, I just mentioned, the network prefix identifies a network and a host number uh, identifies a specific host uh, in this network. Um, so here we're using the word host, but actually we're meaning uh, interface, any uh, network adapter. So it has two parts. The network prefix, since it's called prefix, it's the uh, most significant bits of this um, IP address and the host numbers are up here. So the problem here is how do we know how long is this part or how long is uh, this part? We, we, we have to uh, find a way to find a divider between the network prefix and the host numbers. So at the beginning, before, before 1993, we are using uh, a methodology called the class-based addressing. We, divide, we divided the IP address into five classes uh, where I'm going to show three of them today. Um, however, we identified a lot of problems with that approach. We are going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, but now, after 1993, we are not using this uh, class-based addressing anymore. That's, uh, the new approach is called the uh, ClassNet approach. So in this ClassNet approach, the network prefix is uh, the length of it is very flexible. It can be uh, arbitrarily long. Of course, it has to be shorter than 32 bits. So this is the old way, the uh, internet address classes. So we have a class A, which uh, the most significant bit is zero. So whenever we say an IP address uh, has a most significant bit zero, the network prefix is always eight bits and the host number is always uh, 24 bits. So this is a huge network. And the class B, it has uh, the leading bits one and zero and another 16 bits for network prefix and uh, 16 bits for host. And we have a smaller network with three 110, 24 bits network ID and uh, only Eight bits host. So eight bits means uh, class C network can only accommodate 255 hosts there. But this one, the class A, is very big. The problem here is this are the there are two more classes, but there are multi multi class uh, addresses. We're not going to talk about that. So the problem here is the length of the network prefix is predetermined. It could either be 8, 16, or 24. It cannot be 19, it cannot be uh, 11, whatever number you want to use it. So uh, the problem is class A might be huge, but class C might be very small. And if you want to choose a network range you would e go either with class A, class B, or class C, but you may waste a lot of IP addresses by using this. So in 1993, uh, the network guys, they proposed this new IP address uh, format. They called it Classness Interdomain Routing, or CIDR. So Classness means we don't have those 
class ABC anymore. We don't predefine the network prefix like 8, 16, or 28. So the key concept, the idea is the length of the network prefix can be arbitrarily long, flexible, um, and it is defined by the network hierarchy. So it can be 11 bits, it can be 30 bits, or 23 bits. So there are several benefits of this. Uh, first is uh, the routers. Uh, actually, because of this, the burden of the routers has decreased a lot, but we're not uh, uh, getting into that. And another consequence is uh, previously when you look at an IP address, by matching the first the three bits, you, you can know if, if it's a class A, class B, or class C, then you know how long is the network uh, prefix. But now, because it's classness, you have to explicitly say this IP address or this network has a prefix of uh, a certain uh, bits. And whenever you advertise an IP address, technically you have to include a prefix there to tell people how long is the uh, the, the length of a prefix to tell people how long it is. So previously the IP address only have a A dot B dot three dot D, and now it also has a slash and the X. And the X is the number of bits in sublet portions of the address. Sometimes you don't see this part, that's because maybe uh, they are using the default length of the old uh, class four in the old class four definition. But technically, um, they should always put the, the X there. So for example, this is a network, 200.23.16.0, and it has 23 bits of a network prefix. So we can say in this figure, all the leading 23 parts bits are the network prefix. So previously, this was not possible. You, the prefix would be either 8, 16, or 24 bits. So the, the benefit of this is uh, the, the size of uh, uh, the local network or the size of the network can be more fine-grained by, by choosing uh, different uh, prefix numbers. So if we choose uh, 16, we can have uh, more than 65,000 hosts, and we can choose 27, which gives us only 32 hosts. And we can also have huge, like uh, only eight, eight bits of our uh, network prefix. That, that will give us 24 bits uh, of network host addresses, which is huge. So we discussed that there are some reserved uh, private IP addresses. So those IP addresses uh, are only supposed to use in uh, local area networks or uh, uh, wider area networks. So those IP addresses uh, should never be public IP addresses on the internet. Uh, there are three classes. Uh, first is 10 dot zero dot zero dot zero uh, slash eight and uh, if you are connecting to the ASU network uh, ASU guest, ASU encrypted uh, you do a IP config or IF config you can you can see that your IP address is uh, starting with 10 so ASU is using a big uh, subnet starting with uh, IP address 10 and there is another 172 dot 16.0.0 uh, slash 12. And uh, at, a, at your home, you probably, you are using a much smaller network, 192.168.0.0 slash 16. Some router, when they configure it, they configure it as uh, 24 instead of uh, 16, which make it even smaller with only 252 Hosts and uh, that is uh, enough for uh, most uh, of us at home. 
A very, a very interesting problem here is how can we tell if two IP addresses belong to the same network? So we have a IP address one thirty eight dot one oh one dot one fifteen dot two fifty one slash twenty six. So and twenty six we can write it in another way, which is 255, 255, 255, and 162. The reason we can write it as this is uh, look at this line. So this one, we have 26 leading ones. And if we write each of them in a decimal notation, we can have uh, this number. So when someone gives you this network prefix, you can easily change it to a uh, subnet uh, mask. So in order to calculate which network this IP address uh, belongs to, we first translate the host IP address and the subnet mask into binary notations like this. Then we, we perform a bitwise AND operation on the IP address and the subnet mask. For normal here we have one, one, then the result is also one. And here we have one, zero, the result is zero. So basically, since this is a bitwise AND operation, we are actually only taking the first uh, 26 bits of the IP address as the network address. So if we express this back in the decimal notation, we can have a 160, 138, which is the same as previously, and the 101 the same, 114 the same, and 192, which is different. So this 192 here denotes the network. It cannot be assigned to any host. So actually, as we can see, we have a 26 bits of network prefix, which means we have six bits for <coughs> hosts. And the six bits means 64 uh, IP addresses. So actually, this IP address ranging from dot 192 to 252, they all belong, they all belong to this same subnet. But the first IP address, one. 192 is used to denote the network itself, and the last, the last IP address 252 is used to uh, denote a broadcast address. So the addresses that can be assigned to hosts are only 62, 64 minus 2. Okay, so now we learn the IP addresses, and uh, we all already say uh, IP addresses are uh, put in the uh, IP headers. But uh, what we learned from last week is if you want to send some data through physical network, you have to put those data uh, in a data link layer frame. Uh, some, sometimes that data link frame is an uh, Ethernet frame or uh, Wi-Fi free. However, the problem is we only know the IP address. We don't, in order to send a frame, we need to know the source and the destination MAC address. It's easy to get the source MAC address because you are sending it, your network adapter knows uh, what uh, the MAC address it has. But we don't know the MAC address of the destination. So there is a protocol uh, to solve that. And that protocol is called address resolution protocol. So basically, this protocol tries to map a logical address, which is the IP address, to its physical address. And this can be done uh, either static uh, or uh, dynamic mapping. Obviously, static means the network administrators or uh, the end users, they need to configure that mapping. Or uh, in most cases, we are using a dynamic mapping, and that is uh, what ARP are for. 
And uh, in order to deliver a package, we need uh, network layer address, IP address, and also MAC address. The network address, the IP address, can get our package from postal centers to postal centers and to the, uh, to the uh, final destination as well. But uh, we needed the MAC address to actually transfer it out of the physical uh, devices. So here is a more detailed description. So anytime a host or a router has an IP diagram, uh, IP package to send to another host or router, it already has the logical address, the IP address of the receiver. So how do you get the IP address of the receiver? Uh, for example, there are DNS services, domain name services. So what do you you type in 3w.cnn.com and the DNS server will tell you what IP address this website has. But we still need to map this IP address to a MAC address. So we need to encapsulate the IP package into a frame so it will be able to pass through a physical network. So uh, this means uh, the sender somehow needs to find the physical address of the uh, receiver. So the position of the, this octo uh, protocol. So uh, we talk about the up protocol. Obviously, the, pro the message, the up message itself, will also uh, go through the network. So it has a MAC address, it has a destination address, um, and it helps map IP address to uh, MAC address. So in some literature, they, they put this up uh, as a network layer, but you see they put it lower than the IP layer, uh, which means it serves the IP layer. And uh, in some other papers, uh, literature, uh, they put it up at the boundary of the network and data link. So this is, uh, like we said on Monday, the TCP IP suite. It doesn't have a very uh, well-defined network model there, actually. It didn't say this ARP belongs to this layer. It doesn't even have those layer definitions there. So that's why um, people, when, when they map it, uh, they map it to different layers. But uh, basically, that's it. So let's say how this ARP uh, actually works. Here we have a network 192.168.1.1 one uh, So this is a network address. It has uh, 24 bits of network prefix. So the three bytes at the beginning, they are all um, network prefix. And uh, zero is the first uh, IP address there, so it is not assigned to any host. It denotes uh, this network itself. Then we have a switch uh, that collects two uh, workstations. And the workstation A has an IP address 1.1 and the MAC address A. And the uh, workstation B has IP address 1.2 and the MAC address B and uh, workstation three has MAC address 1.3 and MAC address C. So somehow workstation A learns the IP address of workstation C. So how, how does it learn it? Uh, we're not going to talk about that. Maybe through uh, DNS or whatever, maybe um, the user just tell a lot of users, this is my IP address. But the computer needs to find out in order for workstation A to send a package to either workstation B or workstation C, it still needs to learn the MAC address of it. So the, the workstation A will send out an ARP request. Basically, it means I want to know the MAC address of this 1.3 IP address. But uh, it was obviously it was sending this to the switch. But uh, who? But the, but it doesn't know the MAC address of this. 
So the only way uh, it is going to find out this is to send this message to everyone on this network. It will broadcast this message to everyone. So then workstation B and workstation C, they both got this message. And they, both of them will compare their IP address uh, with this IP address. If uh, they found a match, like uh, workstation C does, it will say, oh, this IP address matches with my IP address, and this is my MAC address. And it will send back a message to uh, workstation A, and only workstation A, because it received the ARP message from the workstation A before, so it knows the, it knows the MAC address of workstation A. So it will send a, a message frame directly to workstation A that saying that my MAC address uh, is uh, safe. After that, the workstation A knows its source address, which is MAC source address, which is A, and uh, destination MAC address, which is safe, and it's able to construct a frame with its source and uh, destination address and the send uh, more messages. Hey, so so mm -hmm. on, a very, on a really large network, would the switch be storing MAC addresses as well so that it doesn't have to broadcast every single time it gets an energy request? Yes. So this switch, it will not tell any workstation that this is the MAC address of uh, this computer. The, pro the reason is the switch doesn't know the IP address. The switch doesn't care about the IP address. The switch only knows the MAC address and which port I should send this. So, so when, this, uh, when this A send this message to say who has MAC, uh, says who has this IP address, the switch doesn't know the answer. So um, switch, uh, like we discussed, it is used to form a local area network. And uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is a router. So router is a networking device that forward data packets between computer networks. Uh, which means, yeah. So the ARP only applies to local area networks? Yes. So we were only talking about within that and not actual internet, going out to the internet. Or exactly. Whatever, just exactly. Only local, um, local area network. And uh, like we said before, at the data link layer, the frame will never leave that local area network. When it goes to a another network, the frame headers, tri trailers will be changed. We have a, a lot of uh, example for that later. So router is this device that uh, collects different networks. So um, the most important function of router is obviously finding the route. But uh, I'm not going to cover that in this class. Um, another reason I'm not covering is those finding route protocols like those, uh, uh, this called uh, border gateway protocols can be really complicated. I'm not really an expert of that. So I don't know. There are some, a lot of uh, security issues there. And uh, um, still, a lot of people are working on those things. But uh, I'm not um, uh, an expert there. But we are going to study something basic first. So router perform the traffic uh, direction on the internet. So any data package is forwarded from one router uh, to another router uh, all through the network. And until it reaches the destination node. So imagine um, you are using a browser in the ASU network to collect to a web server to download a file. So first, your, com your laptop is collected to the uh, Wi-Fi router, uh, which uh, maybe there is a switch collect collects that router uh, to the central links router, and eventually collect to a backbone router, and which bring you brings your package to a Google's router and eventually Google's server. So there are many routers and switches uh, in the between. Uh, normally, we don't see that. So the routers can uh, collect these similar computer networks. 
And uh, those networks, they may have different network access and uh, uh, physical layers. Like we said before, a switch is just one local area network. So they are using the same, uh, same network and the physical layer. So either it's Wi-Fi or um, Ethernet. So even though those networks, they speak different language at the data link layer, they all speak the same language at the network layer, which is the uh, IP protocol. That is why they can uh, communicate. So if you remember last, uh, I think it's Monday, we talked about the switch. The most important part uh, for you to understand is switch has a switch table. And a switch table is a mapping between MAC address and uh, physical port number. So a, rou a router has something uh, very similar. It also has this routing table that maps a network address uh, to the outgoing interface. But uh, in this table, the network address is not a MAC address, but IP address. So we have, uh, we have this example here. Uh, we have, a, a, this is a router. So router always have a symbol like this, and this is uh, the symbol for switch. So we have a, a router R1. This router has two interfaces. Um, and this, this interface, you see the IP address of it, dot one, which means this is one network. This is one local area network. And uh, this, this port on this router has the IP address of 192.168.1.1. And this port is on another local area network, which is uh, 10.1.1.0. So whenever we want to send a package uh, from here, the package will, if the package is not uh, intended to send it to someone in the same, work, same network, the package will be forwarded to the router. And the router will decide how can I send it to the destination based on the routing table. For example, here, This is the network here, and uh, if the network, the, the network address of that destination IP is the same as here, is the same the no, no call network, so it will directly, the, the router will just directly send that package back to that network. But if that, some, some host here want to send a message to 10.1.1.10, for example, then the router will say, oh, it maps, uh, it matches this network address, so I will forward it to this port. Even the, it comes from this line and it goes out to this line. And if that address is something else, there is a default IP address, for example, that's a public, public IP address. And uh, the router one where I know that I should forward it to this network, to this router actually here. So if it's a public IP address, so this one is like a default match everything else. And the router decides, oh, I will for forward this to another router, and that router's address is 10.1.2, which is this port. And then it will be this router's job to forward this to the internet. Any questions? So let's put everything together. We learned the switch, we learned the how router works, let's put uh, everything together. Uh, we have uh, two uh, computer networks here, the left hand side and the right hand side. Uh, they are collected uh, by a router, and this router has two ports. So the left-hand side, we have a network 192.168.1.0, and everything in this network belongs to this, belongs <coughs> to this IP, range, the IP range. 
for example, this router has this uh, 1.254 IP address, and this host A has this 1.1 IP address, host B has 1.2 IP address, and they have different uh, uh, MAC addresses. And uh, at the right-hand side, we have another network uh, 2.0, and uh, this network adapter on router has 2.254, and this one 2.2 and 2.1. So if host A wants to send some message to host B, how does it work? First, host A need to find out if it is in the same network as host B. So how, how it does that? It will use that a bitwise and operation to calculate the network address of its own IP and the destination IP. In this case, since the network prefix are uh, 24, uh, this part is removed, so they match. So computer A knows, oh, this final destination is in the local network uh, as I am in. So it will just send an ARP request. What is the MAC address? for this IP address. And this ARP address, uh, request will be forwarded to this uh, local area network. And then, um, obviously, host B will tell host A, this is my MAC address B. And then, uh, host A can, can use the right source, destination, MAC, and IP address to construct a further packets. So it will use uh, A's own IP address, own MAC address, and B's own B's IP address and MAC address to construct a further uh, message. So this seems uh, very simple. This is like what we discussed uh, on Monday. So in the previous scenario, we're not really using the router. So the next thing, uh, the next scenario we're going to talk about is what if A wants to talk with C. So in this case, uh, A will calculate uh, its uh, network address, which is uh, 192.168.1. And it will calculate the network address uh, for the destination as well. Uh, however, it will find out the destination's network address is 192.168.2. So they do not match. So in this case means uh, the, the workstation C is not in the same local uh, area network. So host A uh, will send a package uh, to its uh, default, default uh, gateway. In this case, the default gateway is a, is a router. So, so at workstation A, when it configures the default gateway, it configs IP address. So it configures this IP address 1.254 as the default gateway of itself. But it still needs to translate this IP address to its MAC address. So it will ask, oh, who has the IP, who, uh, what is the MAC for this gateway's uh, IP address? Then it get a replies from the router, and uh, now host A knows its source IP, its MAC, uh, MAC address. It also knows the router's IP, knows the router's MAC, and also knows the destination's IP address. So this is uh, something interesting at this step, step four. So host A has to send a frame to the router. When it constructs this frame, it cannot use the destination MAC address of the host D, because, uh, host C, sorry. Because it doesn't know that, it never asked for that. And because host C is not in the same network as host A, even if you know that MAC address, it will never be delivered. So when it constructs a message, it will actually put the routers, it will put the routers MAC address as the, as the destination address. But it will put the actual destination 
uh, computer C IP address as the destination IP. So this package in the local network gets delivered to the router, and the router uh, checks the IP address. Oh, this IP address does not match with my IP address. So it is another IP address. Uh, it looks up in its uh, routing table. It says, oh, this IP address I need to forward to this network. So is that why for a computer, when you configure it to be on a network, you need to know the gateway mm -hmm. IP address, the subnet, and your own IP address if it's not? Yes. So yep. it has to store those so that the gateway so that it can make the ARP request to get the MAC address from the router? So, so the gateway in this in. case is a router. So gateway is a, a, a logical device. It's not, a, not necessarily a physical device. So uh, the gateway is uh, the portal to another network. So uh, it, does, it doesn't really tell you the MAC address of uh, your real actual destination. Don't do that. Right, but, so it does, the, but it gives you the MAC address of the router, and that's yes, why. Yes, the reason to do that is the because he is to request it. The, the reason to do that is because you want to send the package to the gateway. In order to right. do that, you need the gateway's uh, MAC address. Right. Yes. And you need the IP address to make the ARP request. Yes. To get the MAC. Address. Yes, because uh, ARP request maps IP address to a MAC address. So. so so you already have the ARP request to the router. You already know the MAC address of the router through the That's DHCP. possible. So, so the scenario I'm talking about here, we're not considering any uh, caching or anything. So I want to tell you everything, how it happens. So there was, it happens sometime, you know, during the process, this happens. But when you actually send a package, you may already know the MAC address of this router. So you don't need to do uh, ARP again. Right, so this is, DHCP passed everything and you've already So DHCP it. is a larger issue, yeah. We're not uh, talking about that here. Right. Mm -hmm. So DHCP is about assigning IP address to those hosts. So, and also, uh, how do you get the IP address? It's also uh, beyond this. It might be just a DNS, yeah. So where are we? So. Now the router tries to forward a host A's package to host C. It only has the map, remember, it only has the IP address of host C. So it will send the ARP request saying who has, uh, who has this IP address? What is your MAC address? Then host C will send back a ARP um, uh, reply and say I have this uh, MAC address so the router can construct this frame, and this frame has a destination IP as the computer sys IP, and the destination MAC address as the computer sys MAC address, but the source IP, source MAC of the uh, router's MAC, and the source IP of the original host A's IP. So, so for computer C, if it only looks at the IP layer, doesn't care about the MAC layer, it is talking to this IP address. The package it says, it says the source IP address. It's not the router's IP address. Any question here? So uh, this is basically how a switch and a router uh, works and it could be it could get much more complicated because there may be many many routers in between and the router's job is to find the best path, path to uh, transfer the packets. Uh, so the takeaway from today is uh, the IP packets they cross the network boundary but the data link frame uh, they do not cross the network boundary. So in the example we just showed the whole uh, IP package uh, didn't get changed. But uh, in some cases, even the IP headers, TCP headers, they will be changed. Um, the example we are showing is still very simple. Uh, so uh, we, we can stop right here. Um, everyone please sign the attendance sheet.
Uh, uh, see you Friday. <laughs>